Hey, everybody. Welcome aboard. It's Casual Friday here on Digital Charcuterie, and I'm very happy to see all of you. And I'm not really seeing all of you, but you know what I mean. That's just a thing we say here online. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Welcome. Thanks for joining me on Casual Friday. If you like the video, if you like me, if you can't tolerate me, whatever, either way, click the thumbs up button because it's just satisfying. It's satisfying to just, just do a little click like that, right? It's fun. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe do that too. And if you're a fan of fantasy, come closer because I'm about to rock your world. You ever heard of a fantasy book called We Were Wizards? Because this is it right here. And I wrote it. And it is the first in a giant series that I have been working on pretty much half of my life. And it's available right now on Amazon. You can get this sexy hardcover. You can get an ebook. You can get a paperback, whatever you prefer. And this is only book one of We Were Wizards. And you know what? Just for you. I'll make the other book available now too. It's available as well. You got Seekers of the Stones, you've got Ghosts of Wizards Past. Go check those out on Amazon. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description below, but literally just Google Amazon, we were wizards and they should come up. So today we're talking about the DCEU and all the crazy stuff that has come out recently about the DCEU, mainly some casting news. And uh, we're gonna feel the question from one of our fans. So let's talk casting first, um, because we found out um, that we are going to be getting a bunch of characters in not just the DC, I keep saying DCEU, but I don't think it's called that anymore. Let's just call it the DCU from now on. Um, but we are getting Mr. Terrific, Metamorpho, Guy Gardner, and, oh boy, I forgot her name, and I have to look it up. And now I feel bad because I should have known this going into it. My bad. Um, who is it? Who is it? Trust me. We'll, we'll figure this out together. Sorry. It's been a, a little bit of a strange morning here. Okay. Hawk Girl. Hawk Girl is going to be in it. Uh, and we have heard some, uh, just some exciting news about these casting uh, choices from Mr. James Gunn himself. So. I hope I'm saying this right. Eddie Gathegi will be playing Mr. Terrific. Now, I saw a picture of this dude. I can totally picture him with the jacket, right? He's tall and he's skinny, which is what Mr. Terrific kind of should be. I don't think he's like super buff, right? And that's how this guy looks. He's tall and he's skinny. Perfect. I love it. Mr. Terrific. Mr. Terrific is one of those cool DC characters that's always kind of on the fringe of things and you don't really think about them, but he's always there and he's always doing a lot of really cool stuff. I think he's supposed to be one of the only DC characters who is smarter than Batman. So he can outsmart the Dark Knight. That's that's something I'm really looking forward to seeing that guy in this movie. That's gonna be so much fun, Mr. Terrific. Wow, as long as he's got the fair play jacket. Um, and he also has a villain. That I love when, when comic books do this. Uh, he has a villain who is his evil counterpart, whose name is Mr. Terrible, I believe. Um, I, I just, I love the idea of a superhero who has a villain that's basically the evil version of him, like how Spider-Man has Venom and Superman has Bizarro and Zorro has White Zorro. Did that guy have a name? I just remember there being a White Zorro when he was bad news. But Mr. Terrific has this Mr. Terrible um, and I hope uh, we get to see that on screen because we don't have enough of that in superhero movies. We don't have enough of superhero faces off against his evil twin, right? Maybe like Iron Man and Iron Monger is the closest we've ever gotten to that. So come on, make it happen. Uh, so that is Mr. Terrific. And then we have Isabella Merced, who is playing Hawk Girl. This is an actor that I have been watching for a while now. I've been keeping my eye open for her. Um, she used to go by Isabella Monner. That, uh, that used to be her name. Um, and she is a younger actor. I think she's like 20 or 21 or something. And the first thing I saw her in was like one of the really crappy last two Transformers movies, one of the Wahlberg ones. I think it was The Last Night. I think she was in The Last Night. And I'm like, oh yeah, this girl's good. She's, you know, she's doing a good job, in, as good a job as you can do in a Transformers movie. And then she showed up in Sicario 2, Day of the Soldado. And Sicario Day of the Soldado, like she, 
she stunned me, man. I'm like, holy cow, this is a kid. She's doing such a good job. And she's playing with really dark subject matter. She was awesome. And then I didn't see the Dora movie, but she played Dora the Explorer. So there you go. She's teaching you how to read maps and stuff. And then she just kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Like I didn't hear about her being in anything anymore. And every once in a while, I'm like, what happened to Isabella? Where's she? What's, what's she going to be in? And now lo and behold, she's going to be hot girl. So I, I think this is my favorite casting choice we have gotten so far for Superman Legacy. Because I love the other ones. They're all cool. But um, she is somebody that I've wanted to see more of. And Hawk Girl is a character I have wanted to see, period. So I'm getting the best of both worlds. It's like ice cream cake together. That's what this is. Isabella Merced as Hawk Girl is ice cream cake. And I can't wait for that. Because if we get Hawk Girl, that stands to reason we're going to get the story of, of, you know, with Hawkman and Hat Set and the curse and all. Because that's the best. I love that story so much. So let's see what happens with that. That's, uh, that's my favorite piece of casting so far, though. But it's definitely not the one that's making the most waves. And we'll get to that. Because the most recently announced one is Anthony Kerrigan, who's fresh off of Barry. He's got nothing else to do. He's just resting on his Barry laurels. I did not watch Barry, but I heard Barry's great. And everything I've seen Anthony Kerrigan in, he's great. So he is going to be playing Metamorpho. Now, Metamorpho is such a James Gunn kind of character. When I heard this happening, I'm like, of course James Gunn is going to use Metamorpho. Of course. Look, I'm like, what? There's no world where this would not happen. And he seems like a great fit for it. Like, he's got the look. He's, he's bald. You know, you can just see him embodying this character physically. I can totally get on board with this. Metamorpho is going to be a hard nut to crack, though. Visually, he's going to be tough to do because he's turning into all these elements. It's it's going to, a lot of the budget is probably going to go towards making Metamorpho do what Metamorpho does. Uh, the budget for this movie is probably going to be pretty wild, but there you go. Anthony Kerrigan is in the DC universe. Very exciting. And last but not least, in terms of the casting James Gunn has announced, we have the one that has definitely made the most waves, Nathan Phil Ion is playing a guy who gardens. Okay. I have said many times, I've been vocal here on Digital Charcuterie about how much I love the universe and the world building of Green Lantern's pocket of things, particularly in the modern era, the way Jeff Johns did it with Rebirth and everything that followed with the Sinestro War. And primarily what I love the most is the spectrum of lanterns, all the different colored things. Oh, I, I could eat that stuff up for breakfast, man. And the four, uh, well, rather five terrestrial green lanterns that I know of from the comics that I was familiar with, which is Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, Guy Gardner, John Stewart, and now Jessica Cruz, who was a rather newer one. Those four characters are characters I've really wanted to see done well, as well as Sinestro, because Sinestro is just the boss. And the idea of the Green Lantern Corps in general and all the different colored lanterns, that's something that I am putting my heart and soul on the line to see on the big screen. Uh, the um, Ryan Reynolds movie, it got close. It got close in some parts, but uh, it's not what we needed as Green Lantern fans. So now along comes James Gunn and he says his longtime collaborator, Nathan Fillion, is going to be Guy Gardner. And if you haven't read any of the comics, if you don't know anything about Guy Gardner, best way I can sum it up, kids, plug your ears. He's an asshole. Guy Gardner is a giant asshole. He is a chauvinistic, alcoholic, alpha male uh, who's just pouty all the time. He's always trying to beat people up to prove his dominance. He's just, he's the worst kind of person, but he's got a decent heart and he does the right thing. Uh, he just does all the wrong things in between doing the right things. So that in and of itself sounds like a James Gunn character. Because let's face it, as much as I love reading the Green Lantern stories, Hal Jordan, who is the focal point of Green Lantern, who is the Ryan Reynolds character, 
from the movie. He is the most boring one. He's just like stoic, average, handsome, white American superhero, muscular man. Like there's nothing extraordinary that stands out about his character. Um, Kyle Rayner is a much more interesting dude. John Stewart is the most interesting of the bunch. I love John Stewart. Uh, he's my favorite human Green Lantern for sure. Um, and then Jessica Cruz, who I haven't read too many things about, but I heard she's awesome. I, I'm really looking forward to reading Jessica Cruz's stuff. Um, they are definitely people I would much rather spend time with if we're going to spend movies and shows with them. And Guy Gardner is great as a supporting character. He's great as the guy who's there. He's there to do what Rocket Raccoon did in Guardians 2. He's there to be the jerk to make everybody hate him. But at the end of the day, to be, as Dr. Erskine put it in Captain America, a good man. Um, he's probably going to get slapped a bunch, but he will do the right thing at the end of the day. So Guy Gardner being in this movie is exciting, but it's also kind of flabbergasting because I thought this was just a Superman movie. Um, we haven't heard any word on other Superman characters except him and Lois. You know, no word about Lex or Brainiac or Jimmy or whatever. All we know is Superman, Lois, and now all of a sudden, Metamorpho, Hawk Girl, Guy Gardner, and Mr. Terrific. This is going to be a stacked seven hour long movie, and I can't wait for it as a DC fan. I can't wait to see all these characters. Um, I really should get around to watching like the ones that I missed, like Black Adam and Shazam 2. I'm sure there's some fun stuff in there, but this, the ensemble cast of Black Adam got me excited even though that excitement fizzled out and I didn't get around to seeing the movie, but it sounds like this ensemble is going to hopefully do what that movie made me hope it would do, if that makes any sense. So color me very intrigued by these casting choices. I like them all a bunch. Now I want to go and uh, answer a question from one of our fans. This comes from Andrew. Hello, Andrew. It's not me. I, I promise I did not write this question. This is from Andrew McMillan. And Andrew McMillan wants to know, will Superman be in the post credit scene for Blue Beetle? Andrew, this is a great question, man. This is really, really, I did not even think of this, but I think you're hitting the nail on the head here, buddy, because of the comments that James Gunn made about Blue Beetle being kind of sort of part of what this universe is that he's building. Um, I think if I had to put a guess on the table right now, I'm saying I'm going to split it right down the middle and call it a 50-50 chance. Uh, the post credit scenes, as we have learned over the past few years, they are something that can easily be shoehorned into any movie, even if it doesn't make any logical sense. Cough, Morbius, cough. So there is a huge, huge option on the table for them right now to just grab a camera, grab Sholem Aradwenya, and grab David Cornsweet and say, interact as Blue Beetle and Superman right now. Just interact. Go ahead. And cut. It, that They can throw that together in a day if they want to. What would it serve, though, is the question. What would that serve to do? And what kind of script is James Gunn um, trying to tell? What kind of story is he trying to tell with Superman Legacy? Because we have to remember that, you know, scripts and stories are very important to storytellers. As a guy who has written fantasy books, I can tell you that's the case. Um, and for example, let, let's use my book as one example. I have a main character in one of the books here. And the first time we see that main character is a very important moment. It's a very important moment um, that I worked really hard to make sure it felt right. I worked really hard to make sure the first time the readers see this guy's face and see how the other characters interact with him, it hits them and sticks with them emotionally. And it happens, it doesn't happen in this first book, it happens in this next one here. So technically, I could have thrown him into the first book. I could have thrown him into an epilogue and been like, oh, by the way, this guy's coming. But then I ruin that scene in here that I worked so, so hard to get as right as I wanted it to be. 
And we don't know what this Superman legacy script is yet, but I can guarantee knowing James Gunn and knowing how he introduces characters, um, there's probably a great introduction being planned for Superman. There's probably a great moment in that film where we see Clark Kent as Superman in his uniform for the first time. And it's emotionally powerful and it's a part of the movie that sticks with us forever. And you would undermine that by throwing him into Blue Beetle just as a marketing gimmick kind of thing. Because at the end of the day, that's really what these post credit scenes are. I love them. I swear by the MCU. I swear by, Com like, I love that stuff. I have so much fun. But they are marketing tools, you know, at the end of the day. There really isn't one that serves the story of the movie. It's, and it just kind of serves to get you hyped for the next thing. And that's fine. But that's just, that's, it is what it is. So, Andrew, I don't think... I want to see Superman in the Blue Beetle movie in a post credit scene, but you know what I could do, I could go for, is maybe Clark Kent, maybe Lois Lane, maybe one of these other characters we talked about, like Mr. Terrific, unless, again, unless those characters have a spot in the Superman script where it is a crucial, big, beautiful moment that we get to meet them for the first time there and see that unfold, uh, because then I don't want to ruin those moments. But if none, if there's a character there that doesn't have one of those moments that just kind of pops up in that film, then yeah, sure, make them pop up in Blue Beetle uh, to set the stage for more and get us excited and to give us confidence in Blue Beetle because. This looks like it's going to be a big, exciting, fun movie and an important movie, right? Our first Latin American superhero led, like that's, that's a beautiful thing. That is so friggin' cool. And you have a great actor filling the role. You have a great character that we have not seen on the big screen before. So even though this, uh, this Blue Beetle movie feels small in the grand scheme of things, there's a lot of important stuff riding on its sexy blue shoulders I and mean, we want to get it right and we want to make sure we don't undercut it with too much uh but at the same time it would feel nice to know that it's going to matter in the coming years because um i was a little bit surprised with how the flash movie didn't sort of spell out how everything was going to be changed uh, it didn't do it at least in any serious comprehensible way. Maybe I was just too stupid to, to notice, but the Flash movie did a lot of stuff right and I liked it a lot. But one thing it didn't do that I kind of hoped it would was say, this is why the old DC universe is gone and this is why the new DC universe is coming. Uh, it didn't do those things. So um, I would like to have that confidence that we'll see Blue Beetle again because I feel like this character is going to be a lot of fun. Plus, you can't have Blue Beetle without Booster Gold. They're pals, and we know Booster Gold's coming because that is a James Gunn character if I ever saw one, too. Um, so I would, uh, to answer your question, Andrew, make the longest story short. I'm sorry, I'm a rambler. I think it's a 50-50 chance, like I said, and I would much rather see Clark or Mr. Terrific or Lois or somebody who does not have a planned, giant, powerful reveal in Superman Legacy. That's what I hope. But what do you guys think? What are you excited for? How do these casting uh, announcements hit you? How are you feeling about them? Are you fans of these actors? Are you fans of these characters? Who do you want to see that we haven't heard about yet? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. This has been Casual Friday. I've been Andrew Fantasia. You've been awesome. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And until next time, may you be the masters of your own universe.